Hi and welcome back. In our last video we went ahead and set up the top navigation bar for our second project in our Introduction to Dreamweaver series. In this video what I want to go ahead and do is focus on formatting this content area right here as well as this footer area right down here. And you can see here we're going to do a couple different things. First thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to apply some padding in here and we're also going to slightly change the background color. Right now the background color for this area is just white what the wrapper um, color is. But we want to soften that up just a little bit. White is oftentimes really stark on your eyes. So we're going to soften that area up a little bit. We're also going to format our paragraphs as well as our H1s and our H2s here. And then we're going to move on and talk about formatting the footer area. But first let's go ahead and look at this um, content area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and here we are back in our design and you can see the content area as it appears right now. So I'm going to go ahead and again I'm going to go into the code view for my CSS styles and I'm going to scroll down until I find my containers. And whoop, there they are, containers. And I'm specifically looking for the content container. And again, I want to just soften that background color up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do background color. And I'm going to go ahead and do FFF3EE. And that's just going to give it a slight orange tint to that background area. Not very much at all. It's just going to go ahead and um, make that a little less um, bright. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply some padding on this because I don't want our design to be right up against the edge there. So I'm going to go ahead and do padding and I'm just going to go ahead and apply 20 pixels. And again you're going to remember the difference between margin and padding is margin is on the outside of an object or a container and padding is on the inside of a container. So I've gone ahead and do padding 20 pixels there. And I'm going to go ahead and save this now and come back into design view. And you can see we have a slightly softer color right now. And we can see the 20 pixels of padding that's separating our content from the items that are around it. Now we need to go ahead and create three text styles. We need to create a text style for our H1s for our paragraphs and our H2s. So let's go ahead and again look at our sample and you can see the way the H1s are going to look here and the way the H2s are going to look. We have a different font, a different font color as well as some spacing around it. For our paragraphs we haven't changed the color of the font but we have given ourselves a little bit of line spacing to make the text space out a little bit more as well as place some uh, bottom margin on those individual paragraphs. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this here. And here I am back in, my, back in Dreamweaver. I'm going to come back in here to code. And I'm going to scroll down. And I have a section here called Headings. And it's in this Headings section that we're actually going to customize our H1s and our H2s. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change the size of these to make them a little bit larger. So I'm going to make the font size of my H1s 42 pixels. I want them to be large and my H2s are going to be 30 pixels. So we'll go ahead and change the size of those and we go ahead and look and make sure that's taken effect. Yes it has. And then I want to go ahead and specify a different font for those. Now the font is actually the same for all of my headings. So instead of putting it in twice for both the H1 and the H2, I'm going to go ahead and specify that in my group selector right up here. So it applies to all of my headings. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, return at the end of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do font family. And the font family that I want to use is Georgia. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create this group selector here. And in this I specify the font weight is bold. The color is going to be overridden a little bit later. We'll do that next. And then I change the font right there. We'll save that. Let's just take a look at it before we change the color. And there we go. Now, the actual text color that we're going to use here is going to be this orange that matches this orange right here. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and come back into my styles. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here until I find my containers. And my top nav is the first occurrence of that color. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it just so I remember the number. And then I'm going to scroll back up to my headings here. And I'm going to highlight the black color right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in that orange color. And now when I go to design, you can see the orange color. One last thing we need to do on those headings is we need to put some space on the bottom of each one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and I'm going to come back in here to code and for the H1 I'm going to go ahead and do margin dash bottom colon and I'm going to go ahead and make it 14 pixels. And I'm going to do the same thing for my H2 only I'm going to make it slightly less margin bottom is going to be 12 pixels. And I could have probably made it above 14 pixels and just placed it up here. But that would also affect my H3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s, which I may want to be different later on. So I went ahead and placed them right in that area right there. And we'll save that and go back into Design View. And now you can see that we have some space on the bottom. We still need the space on the bottom of the paragraphs, though, as well, as some additional line spacing. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Come back into Code View for my style sheet. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And if you're using the framework, I have a text elements um, setting right here. And I'm going to change a couple of items on my paragraphs, on my P tags. So go ahead and enter in this default right here. The only thing I am going to change is I'm going to make this a little bit larger. I'm going to increase the line spacing to 180 to just sort of give myself a little extra space there. And then I'm going to hit enter at the end of that and tab myself over. And I'm going to go ahead and place my bottom margin on that. And the bottom margin is going to be 12 pixels for myself. We'll go ahead and save that. And come back in here to design view and you'll now see the way my paragraphs are laid out. And it's going to be very similar, or it's going to be exactly similar to the um, sample that I have right here. So that's all we're going to go ahead and do for our content area. And again, if we had images or we had a sidebar, we could go ahead and place that in at this uh, point as well. Um, but we don't have that for this design. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to format this footer here. And a few things we need to do, if we look at the way we our footer appears now, we need to go ahead and change the color here. We need to center it. We also need to change the way the text is appearing. And let's take a look at that one more time. You'll see the way that looks right down there. And again, we're using that dark orange color for the footer. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and come back in here and go back into code view for my CSS and scroll down to where my containers are. And you're going to see my final container there for footer. So here what I'm going to go ahead and do is click right in there and I'm going to say background dash color is going to be that same dark orange color and I already have that copied in there it's B64A23 we'll save that right there and come back into design view and you'll see that div is now formatted so now we're going to go ahead and do the text that's in here
and for the text that's in here I actually need to go ahead and create a class style and apply it and so if I come back into my code view and scroll down a little bit further I'm gonna see my miscellaneous section right here and the miscellaneous section actually already has a style called footer text inside of it and again if you don't have the framework you can go ahead and type this information in but we're going to go ahead and alter it so it looks like our design. So I'm going to go ahead and the font size is fine. The font style should be normal. We don't want it to be bold. I do want to change the color though. I don't want it to be gray. I want it to actually be white. So I'm going to replace that with three F's. I'm going to click at the end of this style here and just hit enter and tab over. And I also want to say text align center to center the text and I want to give myself a little bit of padding on this um, both the top and the bottom just to space it out a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and say padding let's say five pixels so padding five pixels we'll save that come back in here to design view and you don't see a change on that and the reason for that is that when you use a class style to format something, you need to actually make sure that that piece of text references that class style. So again, I'm going to come in here to code view, and then I'm going to go into my source code here. And you're going to see in my HTML source code, there's the footer div, and there's that P tag that has my footer in it. But there's no reference to the class style footer text. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is you'll see my opening P tag here. I'm going to click in between the actual letter, the tag P, and the bracket and type a space. And I'm going to go ahead and use the class attribute. And the class attribute that I'm going to go ahead and select is footer text. So you'll go ahead and enter in this value right here. And again, that's inside of the opening P tag. I'll save that and then come back into design view and now you're going to see the footer text there and that text is very very small so I'm actually going to go ahead and come back in here to code view and come into styles again and go down to the bottom to that miscellaneous group and where it says font size 80% I'm going to go ahead and make that 100% right like that and now we'll go into design view and now you can see I can read my footer text a little bit better now let's go ahead and give this one final look over as far as just the basic formatting goes and if I come in here to Chrome and open this up I can take a look test my top navigation look at this area here and you'll see everything is looking good. So that's all you need to do as far as setting up the CSS for our sample page here. And again, as we go through a few more of the elements that are in this design, we're going to tweak the CSS a little bit more. But that's the basic um, layout for this page. And you can see at this point that most of the work that you're going to be doing in laying out a website isn't actually going to be in the HTML. It's actually going to be in the CSS. The majority of your work is usually going to be in the CSS. So let's go ahead and I'm going to cl close that page out, minimize this. And uh, in the next video, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and set up this slider, this fading slider up here. You can see I just have a placeholder image right there. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add the jQuery JavaScript that's going to go ahead and make this fade from one image to the other like you see it there. So I'll see you in the next video.